What's up everyone, Kaiji no Kami here, and you might find this hard to believe, but I am a huge fan of The Simpsons. Well, duh! I know, shocking, isn't it? For those who may not know, The Simpsons was created by an artist known as Matt Groening. The Simpsons premiered in 1987 as a series of shorts on The Tracy Ullman Show before becoming a regular sitcom on Fox in 1989. Man, this is crazy. I hope I didn't brain my damage. Unbeknownst to the world, The Simpsons was about to become a phenomenon that would become a merchandising tank. Oh, is there anything they won't do? In fact, it became such a big hit that it is still going to this day, currently in its 29th season. If I hear one more thing about The Simpsons, I swear I'm going to scream. <laughs> At first they were cute and funny, but now they're just annoying. With more than 600 episodes under its belt, it is only natural that the show would have just as much good as it has bad. When the show is good, it is really good. Even groundbreaking. It was not afraid to cover material that other sitcoms would not at the time. The Simpsons has a plethora of so many great jokes from this one. If TV has taught me anything, it's that miracles always happen to poor kids at Christmas. It happened to Tiny Tim, it happened to Charlie Brown, it happened to the Smurfs, and it's gonna happen to us. To this. Art, I don't want to alarm you, but there may be a boogeyman or boogeyman in the house. Ah! And this. Alternatively, when it is bad... Well... There's this. How do you know you got him from me? Finally, before actually going into my episode count, I do have one rule for this video, and that is I will not be including any Treehouse of Horror episodes, as that would make the list too easy. Treehouse of Horror 5 is my favorite episode of all time, so I wanted to make this list more fair to the rest of the series by not counting the Treehouse of Horror episodes. Well, whatever. Let's take a look at what are my top 10 episodes of The Simpsons. Number 10. Kicking off my list is an interesting episode that is very underrated, and apparently it was an episode that was supposed to be early on in the show, but the writers and Matt Groening felt it didn't fit with the tone, even though there's nothing really wrong with it since most of it is a dream sequence. But whatever, and that is El Vieje Misterioso de Nostro Homa. By season 8, Marge and Homer have had plenty of Marriage Crisis episodes. Nevertheless, unlike some of the others, this one stands out most of all for its creativity. Homer attends an annual chili cook-off where he tends to deem everything too mild for his taste buds. This year though, Wiggum puts a Guatemalan insanity pepper into his chili that descends Homer into madness. You gotta help me! Well, sure, buddy, I'd be happy to help out. What can I do? Doodly doo doodly 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 Homer's spirit journey showcases some of the finest animation of the entire series. Be it the abstract backgrounds, a giant snake, to a talking space coyote voiced by Johnny Cash. The problem, Homer, is that the mind is always chattering away with a thousand thoughts at once. Yeah, that's me, all right. We are treated to a bizarre scenario that ends with Homer trying to figure out who his soulmate is. Of course, to us the audience, we already know it is going to be Marge, but that doesn't take away from the sweet ending regardless of how obvious it was. Number 9 one thing you'll notice about The Simpsons is that there are a lot of really sweet episodes, and Lisa's wedding is one of the best. Being a cartoon, characters only age if the writers want them to. This means the characters can exist for as long as the writers want at any age they want. Sometimes though, an audience desires to see what a character would look like in a future setting. Thus, we were given something special here. Hey, hey there with a personal call, Simpson! Oh, uh, but Mr. Milhouse! My little girl's getting married! Lisa comes across a fortune teller who tells us what her future would be like. The world has become a very different place. <laughs> 
Everything works with what has come before, and there are even glimpses at what would come to pass. We're both utterly humorless about our vegetarianism. Most of all, the family aspect is still there, and Lisa is as sweet as ever. Additionally, we get some really great moments, such as being told that Maggie is a wonderful singer who never shuts up, yet we never even get to hear her talk once. To sing Amazing Grace, Miss Maggie Simpson. <laughs> She's quite a hellion, but she does have an incredible voice. <clears throat> Stop everything! We also have a nice moment of Homer rambling on until Lisa stops him. I don't think anybody could have had a better daughter than Dad, you. Dad, you're babbling. See? You're still helping me. It is all very touching and is hands down the most authentic future episode in the series. Number 8. Being that I was born in the early 80s, I kind of didn't understand the Michael Jackson craze. In fact, I pretty much missed the Michael Jackson phase. So when Simpsons was making this big deal about Michael Jackson being on, I was like, okay, but you know what? Stark Raving Dad is easily one of my favorites. This episode kicks off with Homer being put into a mental institution for wearing a pink shirt to work, where he ends up meeting with a man claiming to be Michael Jackson. Hi, I'm Michael Jackson from the Jacksons. I'm Homer Simpson from the Simpsons. After Homer is released, the episode seamlessly transitions to focus on Bart, who forgot to get his sister a present for her birthday. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, overlooked middle child. Happy birthday to me. With the help of Michael Jackson, we are provided with a lot of fantastic laughs and dialogue that depicts Bart as a normal child who truly cares for his sister, as opposed to the jerkish man-child he will become decades later. Lisa, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Lisa. Lisa, it's your birthday. One of my favorite moments is when Bart calls Millhouse and asks this. Hello, Millhouse. Can you keep a secret? No. Oh well, who cares? Michael Jackson is coming to my house! Of course, this is just one of the many stupendous moments from this episode. Then one Monday morning, <clears throat> I got up. I couldn't leave the house. I just couldn't. Was the door locked? No! I just couldn't face what was out there. Was it raining? No. Seven. It's kind of hard to choose which character is my least favorite Simpson. Lisa or Marge? They both have... I don't know, they rub me the wrong way at times, but when they have truly excellent episodes, they get truly excellent episodes, as Marge does in A Streetcar Named Marge. Marge auditions for a play based on A Streetcar Named Desire and ends up getting the role due to her sad state of affairs when she calls Homer. I'll come home right away. All right, I'll pick up a bucket of fried chicken. <gasps> Stop bothering my Blanche! This leads to her being cast as a woman named Blanche Dubois in the play, whose love life is an emotional roller coaster, mimicking that of Marge's. Homer's antics end up inspiring Marge to be at her best for the play, which begins with a hysterical nod to Sweeney Todd that managed to stir a controversy from the overly sensitive. Add in a hilarious subplot dealing with Maggie at a daycare that ends with a nice reference to Hitchcock and the birds. <coughs> and you have yourself one exceptional episode. And who could forget John Lovett's wonderful performance as both play director Llewellyn and his sister. While directing Hats Off to Hanukkah, I reduced more than one cast member to tears. Did I expect too much from fourth graders? We're the only daycare centered in town that's not currently under investigation by the state. Number six. There are many episodes in this series where Homer takes on some type of new job role, but none of them are as fine as the episode Deep Space Homer. What sets this episode apart from the others is that NASA decides they want to send an average everyday Joe into space for ratings, and Homer ends up being their candidate by calling them. Hello, is this NASA? Yes. Good. Listen. I'm sick of your boring space launches. Now, I'm just an ordinary blue-collar slob, but I know what I like on TV. As such, Homer only got the job because he is an idiot, which is what NASA wanted. Our long search is over. Nothing more, nothing less. Of course, that isn't all there is to this episode, as we also get a lot of funny dialogue, be it from Buzz Aldrin. Careful, they're ruffled. Ken Brockman. And I, for one, welcome our new insect overlords. Like to remind them that as a trusted TV personality, uh, I can be helpful in rounding up others to... 
toil in their underground sugar caves. To even the celebration of an inanimate carbon rod. In rod we trust. Number five. The Simpsons are always mocking movies and TVs and pop culture in general. So it was only fitting when they finally decided to do something that would kind of mock James Bond with You Only Move Twice. James Bond jokes are no stranger to The Simpsons, but here we get an entire episode focused on a James Bond-like villain named Hank Scorpio. Scorpio! He'll sting you with his dreams of power and wealth. He'll welcome you into his lair. With free dental care and a stock plan that helps you invest. Homer is hired by Hank's company Globex after Smithers refuses the job offer. What's wrong with this country? Can't a man walk down the street without being offered a job? And the Simpsons family move to a new town. About those things you borrowed from me over the years, you gonna be needing those things in Cypress Creek? Yes. Oh. Uh... Oakley, dokely. Oakley, dokely. Here, Lisa learns that she is allergic to pretty much everything. Marge is so bored by the self-cleaning capabilities of their new house that she takes to drinking. And Bart ends up in a remedial class for not being able to write in cursive. So, you never learned cursive? Uh, well, I know hell or damn and bit. Uh, cursive handwriting, script. Meanwhile, Homer loves it while voice actor Albert Brooks brings in his best performance to the franchise ever in the voice of Hank Scorpio. There's the hammock hut. That's on third. Uh -huh. There's hammocks are us. Got that's it. on third, too. You got put your butt there. Mm -hmm. That's on third. Yes. Swing low, sweet chariot. Right. Matter of fact, they're all in the same complex. It's the hammock complex down on third. Oh, the hammock district. That's right. What makes this episode even funnier is that Homer is oblivious to everything that's going on with his newfound boss. Don't call me that word. I don't like things that elevate me above the other people. I mean co-worker. Even when he is witnessing Hank make demands to the UN and during a fight sequence. Oh, and who can forget about this classic moment? Nice work, Homer! Am I proud of you? When you go home tonight, there's gonna be another story on your house. Thank you. Although, this scene right here might actually be my favorite. Hey, you any sugar around here? Sugar? Sure. There you go. Sorry it's not in packages. Want some cream? Eh, uh, no. Just look at Homer's face during this scene. Eh, uh, no. <laughs> to top it off, this scene right here at the end has a whole new meaning to it ever since I moved to Colorado in 2006. Aw, oh, the Denver Broncos! Number four. What it was like to be a Simpsons fan during the summer of 1995. That's right, you probably guessed it because no list would be complete without having Who Shot Mr. Burns on it, both parts. Man, what an adventure this was. The first part had a lot of build up leading to Mr. Burns getting shot, leaving off on a cliffhanger that blessed us with an excellent second half that dismissed a lot of the theories that spawned over a summer long adventure right from the get go, ending with one hilarious badass revelation. <laughs> Well, I couldn't possibly solve this mystery. Can you? These episodes are so damn funny and interesting. Why is it when I heard the word school and the word exploded, I immediately thought of the word Skinner? Kids, would you step outside for a second? <gasps> Why don't we check out that suit Burns was wearing when he got shot? Did you have the same backwards talking dream with the flaming cards? I'll drive. But it was the aforementioned summer break where the real fun really took place. I was in 7th grade when Mr. Burns was left lying on the sundial and everyone around me swore it was Smithers that shot him. That would have made a lot more sense. My friends and I all had our theories, which was a big topic of discussion right into the beginning of 8th grade when the second half came out and the only person I know that proclaimed it would be my dad. There were also some cool contests that I couldn't participate in and interesting specials and commercials that also took place over this time. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of time. Ugh, sorry. Wrong episode. This episode is wonderful too. No. My third favorite episode of the franchise is one that has been highly praised by everyone ever since it aired because so many sites and people and awards have proclaimed that Last Exit to Springfield is the greatest Simpsons episode ever made. While that is debatable, no one can deny that it is a superb one nonetheless. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times. You stupid monkey. 
another grounded episode where we get to see Homer outwit Mr. Burns through dumb luck. Mr. Burns decides he wants to remove the dental plan from his employee's union contract. To make up for this, he offers them a keg of beer. Unfortunately for him, the show's B-plot features Lisa needing to get braces, which motivates Homer to take charge and reject Burns' offer. If we give up our dental plan... I'll have to pay for Lisa's braces! What we get is an episode that is both sweet and hilarious as we see Homer at his finest, thinking about his child's future over his own, while also mistaking Burns' attempt at negotiations for advances, which constantly causes him to run off. Sorry, Mr. Burns, but I don't go in for these backdoor shenanigans. Sure, I'm flattered, maybe even a little curious, but the answer is no! Or go to the bathroom in one instance. Uh, he wouldn't even hear me out. Ah. <sighs> Find the bathroom all right? Uh, yeah. And on top of a hilarious McBain movie clip in its opening. Nice to see you. And you have an episode that is worthy of its praise. The mirror. The mirror! <laughs> Number two. If you are a Simpsons fan, you definitely know who Sideshow Bob is, who is voiced by the great legendary Kelsey Grammer. It doesn't matter how bad the episode is, Kelsey Grammer always seems to provide his best work regardless of the content. And here it is no different, which is Cape Fear. Sideshow Bob is my favorite Simpsons character and has been ever since I was first introduced to the character through the episode where he married Selma. This episode followed that and the writers just went all out. Hey kids, wanna drive through that cactus patch? Yeah! Yeah! No! Whoop! Two against one! <laughs> it's a parody of the movie by the same title starring the phenomenal Robert Mitchum. Oh, and the remake that stars Robert De Niro. Sideshow Bob is released from prison and wants revenge on Bart. This causes the Simpsons to be put into a protection program where their names are changed to the Thompsons and they are moved to a new home. The this provides us with two of the finest Homer moments ever. Hello, Mr. Thompson. I think he's talking to you. Do you want to see my new chainsaw and hockey mask? Ah! Oh, sorry. What am I thinking? Along with some iconic Bob moments, one which only occurred due to the episode running a few seconds too short. <laughs> if you have never seen this episode, you are missing out. Honorable mention. No! <laughs> This off the maps. Who keeps the Martians under wraps? We do, we do. Monterey. What's it called? Monterey. Once again. Monterey. Bart can have it Mondays and Thursdays. Millhouse will get it Tuesdays and Fridays. And yours truly will take it Wednesdays and Saturdays. Perfect. Wait a minute. What about Sunday? Yeah, what about Sunday? Hey, the rich sure know how to live. Say it, Frenchie. Say chowder. Never! Okay, you asked for it. I'm gonna enjoy this. Grace, come here. There's a sinister looking kid I want you to see. Oh. Number one. And the award for being my favorite Simpsons episode of all time goes to. That's right. 22 short films about Springfield. Over the course of its seven seasons, the writers of The Simpsons have provided us with a vast amount of characters with their own personalities and quirks that you rarely see due to the show having to focus on the titular family. Sometimes I wonder about all the people in this town. Do you think anything interesting ever happens to them? I mean, there must be thousands of great stories out there. Thankfully, they decided to set The Simpsons family aside to give us a one-of-a-kind episode that feels like you are watching a Tarantino-esque story focusing on several of Springfield's finest. We have a skit about Skinner cooking dinner for Charmers that goes wrong. I thought we were having steamed clams. No, no, I said steamed hams. That's what I call hamburgers. 
You call hamburgers steamed hams. Apu leaving his store for five minutes to party like. It's on sale for $19.99. A parody of Pulp Fiction that deals with Chief Wiggum. Well, at McDonald's, you can buy a Krusty Burger with cheese, right? But they don't call it a Krusty Burger with cheese. Get out. Well, why do they call it? A quarter pounder with cheese. Dr. Nick. Misuse of the cadavers. I get here earlier when I drive in the carpool lane. Bumble me, man. And so on. Not only is this already an interesting concept, but the way the show transitions to different characters and locations is done with supreme finesse. And of course, the Simpsons do show up throughout the episode. Nevertheless, there is not another episode that's like 22 short films in the franchise, which also gives it a special feel to it. I hope you enjoyed my list. If you are a Simpsons fan, tell me what your favorite episodes are. And if you are not a Simpsons fan, what are you waiting for? Is there anything holding you back? Are you interested in learning about the series and watching it? Or do you just not have an interest altogether? Either way, let me know. And until next time, bye.